stock market today, September 30th, 2022, end of the month. In fact, this, since today is Friday, this coming Sunday, I will be posting a weekly chart review on the stock market. So look forward to that. But today, let's get into the market action of this one day. We got the NASDAQ down 1.51%. We got the S&P down the same amount. We got the 10-year treasury up 3.1 basis point. Gold up 0.01%. Bitcoin down 0.48%. Oil down 1.92%. And we see the numbers here too. And for me personally, uh, like the, the just every day saying, oh, it's, it's up this percent, it's down this percent. Eh, if you're not putting it in context of what it's re in relation to, all right, is, is down 1.51%, is that big or is that not big? What is it in relation to? So that's why when we're looking at this MMRI, this risk indicator, which closed at 265, we're in the kind of the midway of this high range. That's why I started putting it into a graph format because just looking at what this number is without putting it into context of what it is in relationship to, to me, uh, it seems a little easier to look at this and say wow I see what's going on right we see from 200 to 300 is high level of risk anything over high is extreme risk and we are we keep moving towards that extreme point part of the MMRI is that equation that makes up that number uh, part of it is this the 10-year uh, US Treasury U.S. Treasury is up today, right? Closing at uh, three point eighty forty. <laughs> so basically, I think in a nutshell, a very easy way to sum this up is that when when the when this Treasury keeps going up, big institutions start looking at, huh? Should I pull money out of the stock market and put it into Treasuries? because they feel that they, they can get more of a secured return uh, in that like asset class versus taking a little more risk in equities. That's my layman idea of it. If you feel like you, if you have a more clear or a more accurate explanation, please leave it in the comments. What we see right here uh, on, on this day though, it really spiked up and so whatever whatever happened it probably wasn't me you mom and pops buying a bunch of treasuries to bring this down but somehow that came down right and now we're creeping back up take a look at the S&P 500 makeup of the S&P 500 and some other things that give us an idea of what's been happening in the stock market today. So S&P 500, we see on this pro chart, money is still flowing out. We got this wide gap between the two lines of our stochastic. It's a weekly stochastic, so it's showing us this long-term trend. And now it's, it's going below this 33% uh, percent line here. And, and as long as this stays like really, really wide apart, uh, we um, we can expect some more uh, downward trend until we see something different, and you can see it, it can stay below that 33%. These are supposed to be overbought and oversold. I don't know if that's the best way to really um, think about it. That's not the way that I personally think about it, and uh, but maybe maybe that is the the best way. Looking at the candlestick action for today, we see that the big amount of selling volume and the uh, Opened here, closed here, we see that it, it, it tried to trade all the way up to here and broke broke this uh, 365. Now we're down here at the 
the high three 350s. Hey, 357, that might be your favorite number. But that we see is a we're in this downward, downward trend. So let's take a look at similar picture with the technology sector ETF. We got this downward weekly stochastic with a good separation between those two. See right here, is, uh, wasn't, wasn't that strong a separation. When you see this big separation, it's showing you the strong trend. Money has just been flowing out. And the daily candle looking similar, right, to the S&P 500. Traded up here, but sellers just pushing this down. So we opened below yesterday's close. When close below yesterday's close, really just in this downtrend. And maybe this was our rally. <laughs> maybe this was our rally. If if that's the case, like this, obviously these didn't even rally uh, as much as it, it did here. Not not much of a rally. We'll see how next week looks. If there's going to be a bigger rally, our healthcare. Now, healthcare was had some money flowing in, but um, yep, money's flowing out, and and now we, we see that the it's taking the on this weekly stochastic, showing us a significant downward downward trend, and uh, it's indicating what we what we see here. But here, bam, that's really I guess what it's showing us. But we're you can see we're in the support line. The other thing that we can see is that we're definitely under this resistance line here but it's like a little bit of um even from here to here it seems like there's a bit of re support resistance right here where it's a little bit above that but now we're now we're below that so but it's holding up right there what you can see so maybe we can expect to see some more selling to the downside next week looking at consumer discretionary same Looks like the same picture is healthcare. And how does it look on the the daily candle for today? Oh, looking, uh, one thing that this is showing us when you start getting these smaller bodies of the candles, it starts indicating a slowing of momentum. Even though we have uh, a decent amount of selling volume and we see that the buyers push it all the way up here, but selling just brought it down. And we're really, seemingly have significantly broke this uh, resistance line here or support line and looking to the left maybe it'll get stuck in this area for a little while let's take a look on the pro 2 at real estate which obviously you know just same thing you could see it started kind of bumping up here showing this probably short covering rally or whatever who knows why exactly uh maybe somebody does if you know that answer please put it in the comments below but nonetheless today it's got a wide wide spread and in, in real estate even though our candle looking a little little small let's take a better closer look at that the body of that candle oh look at that even even closed higher than it opened and we had a good amount of of uh, buying volume come in but in this big downward trend, I don't know if this is going to be enough. Look at this. This one had this green bar in there. Boom. Ignored. Maybe we're going to see that. And uh, it's here in this lower 50%. So it, it looks like, uh, you know, maybe it's just taking a lot. Sometimes what can happen too is all these people, if they're if they're selling short stock. So, you know, there's, there's two directions you can profit from, from just a stock transaction right not including options or anything like that just the stock there's two directions most people are familiar with buy low sell high well there's another way to do it sell high buy low but what's the last thing that I said buy right so it could be people shorting they're selling high they they come down here when the price gets down here they need to buy to close sell to open buy to close what does buying do buying puts pressure on prices to go up so sometimes that's why people refer to it as a short uh short seller rally short covering rally covering their position which if uh if you're not familiar with how to short um 
you're missing out on money because look at all <laughs> look at all that money. Let's take a look at our final sector. Real estate. Oh, excuse me, financials. Oh, well, financials, you know, money start flowing in, but just as quickly, right? Didn't even turn to yellow, just like just like healthcare, just like consumer discretionary. Went from red to green and back to back to red. And that stochastic is moving apart. And similar, uh, sim let change that. Oh, okay. Here, kind of stuck in this little, getting some support here, right? It's building that up with our with our candle. We'll have to see if it breaks that. We look to the left. Uh, we're on three months. Maybe if we opened it up to six months, we'd see uh, more support somewhere over there. But still, looks looks pretty looks pretty bearish <laughs> overall. But hey, it's got a little, building a little bit of support. Look at that. Ignored that that bar, kind of slowing this momentum. So that would make sense to build building the base. Um, maybe it's going to build a base to go to the downside if i was going to just you know bet you money right now if i had to then my i would say i'm placing a bet to the downside looking at the whole picture but you know could see something different happen iwm same picture right look at that strong trend to the downside let's take a look at iwm that daily candle on iwm Ooh, look at that, right? Traded all the way up there, tried to get back up to there, but just got rejected. Kind of similar, building this little bit of base. Base for what? Eh, maybe a base to drop. When we look to left, we see we're at we're around this 164. Looking to the left, look at this. We're significantly below that, that other uh, kind of price consolidation zone in there. Q's, same picture, right? Oh man, that's it's the picture of a downward market. What can we say? Q's, Q, Q, Q. Well, we got a little more of a of a um, larger body in in this one today. Lots of volume in there. Buyers pressing it up here, but couldn't. Couldn't do it. Sellers brought it back down here, all the way uh, down down to here, staying in that that downward trend. How about the dollar via UUP? All right. So we had money was flowing in. Okay. And then money, not enough money, kept flowing in to keep that green. It turned to it turned to yellow. Ah, the money started flowing back in, turned back to green. Now we're so we're kind of wavering. And I noticed with the this pro two chart, this kind of happens when you when you start doing the sideways stuff with a stochastic. So what might happen? A lot of times when you, if you just want to trade this pattern, you'd be looking to try to catch us to the downside. But look what happened here in this downside wide wide gap right so it seemed like it, it could be starting a strong downward trend but whoop, went back up so we might be witnessing brent johnson's dollar milk milkshake theory uh unfolding here uup look at it for this daily candle so last three days been selling off now we're hitting a little bit of um, kind of support here and uh with this there's not much uh it's going to build some support here but uh so if it's going to fall maybe it would fall back down to this level or it's or maybe not we'll have to wait and and see what happens with that oil how did oil end up oh oil sold off look at that rallied up but uh sold off closed a little bit below 80 dollars G O L D popped up to the upside, and so we're we're getting kind of stuck back in this range, right? So seems to be building some good support, kind of good amount of base right in there because it sold off, and boom, just wasn't uh, people people were willing to buy, not necessarily gold, but the futures contracts of gold. So that's one thing we really want to be clear about is that. 
we're actually looking at the futures, gold futures, these are derivatives of the actual metal. However, this is a one of the rare cases where the derivative actually determines the price of the physical. You can go down a big rabbit hole with all that type of stuff. <laughs> but nonetheless, futures are a derivative of the real thing and future price determines spot price <laughs> of the physical metal. So that's what we see, kind of looking sideways. Now, my favorite, Bitcoin. Man, I love, I love watching this one. Ooh, volume. We don't have any volume bars, but you know, this, this what we're seeing here. These, these um, really spindly candles, really weak. Like, there's no movement, right? Where you can see some sideways. If, if you can't see sideways out of that, then, then I need to get better at teaching sideways. <clears throat> but we, we, we see, right? Traded all the way up here. Even got above this twenty thousand. Bam! Selling just brought it back down here. Now Bitcoin's going to trade twenty four seven. So we'll see how it keeps unfolding. You know, I'm on Friday night right now. Someone else is on Saturday. Maybe somewhere else in the world trading Bitcoins on Sunday. But nonetheless, sooner or later, this this candle will be will be formed. And so what I'm I'm still thinking the same thing about Bitcoin. If it's gonna if it just cannot get above. If it cannot continue to close above twenty thousand, right? And right now it's it's below all its moving averages. In order to get back to like some people say Bitcoin is going to go to a million, and it maybe it could, but it's not going to go to a million by doing this, because you got to get to twenty four thousand before you can get to a million. And right now it can't get to twenty four thousand, so I don't know what you want me to say if you're a Bitcoin bull. I don't know. Uh, I, I, as I mentioned before, I live in the state of Hawaii, and the state of Hawaii does not allow me to easily trade this. And I have no idea why they, I have no idea why. And it's one reason why I would like to live in another state. So if you live in a state where it's really easy to, to trade Bitcoin, please put that in the comments so I can research your state and maybe I'll move next door to you. Because man, I want to be trading this. I want to be trading it easily. I don't want to have to jump through all these weird hoops. Like, I think Tastyworks has a way to, to trade Bitcoin. And I tried to try to do it. No, no, you can't do that because you live in the United States of America, the land of the free. So we won't let you trade Bitcoin in Hawaii. Eh, whatever. Let's let's close this up. Let's uh, close this up by switching, switching this baby over to uh, SPY. Let's look at that line chart. You, do you love a line chart? I guess I love a line chart because here I am wanting to wanting to look at one. I just like looking at the line chart for the that big picture, big picture view. You could do it on a, you could do it on a, you could do it on any chart. But for me, I just have a fun time looking at the line chart. So what do we see on this line chart? This is where we're at. That little that little circle there. That's where we're at. So we see we dropped, we dropped below that, right? That 365. We're below that. So now we're we're going to start. I would guess we're going to start testing this 350, this 350 area, right, right here, and see how there's this like a little bit of price consolidation right there. So if it if it um, maybe it'll it'll get kind of stuck. At that, what what number is that? Somewhere around around this um, high high three forties, maybe low um, low three fifties. Maybe it'll get stuck in there, and then if it if it breaks that, you know, like who knows? Um, the real big thing, like there's a little bit of of stuff, but I want to see if it's going to fall all the way back down to here, somewhere around this three hundred area. 300, well, 300 would be right here, but it maybe can go, maybe can go lower. I don't know. Uh, I don't know for for a fact. Even though I got a crystal ball over there, fortunately, I haven't figured out how to read it very well, and uh, just using these charts in in the meantime. But for me, what I'm doing 
is I'm doing I'm doing um, two things in the big picture. And one I definitely I definitely recommend you do one. And and the the one I recommend that you do is paper trade. I'm doing paper trading. I'm trading real money and I'm paper trading. And I recommend that you do the same thing even if you're not trading real money yet. If you're not trading real money yet, you should definitely be paper trading. So why do I why do I do paper trading? Well, for a couple reasons. But one real big reason is as I told you, I live in Hawaii and we are on Hawaiian standard time. Like the time zone here, we don't have a daylight savings time. And um just to give you an idea of like how it's different over here in this time zone. The stock market and the in most markets trade on Eastern Standard Time Zone. So that's normally like normally like five or six hours before my time. And because of that, and because of the fact that I really just enjoy getting my beauty sleep, even though it might not be working too well, but I I, I gotta sleep until like six or six thirty every day in the morning. Otherwise, I'm a grump. Right? I just learned from my own health, and from my own mood, I gotta sleep until about six, six thirty. How did I learn that? Well, one way is I used to wake up at like three, four in the morning to be trading, and I was just a grump. So I was like, ah, it's not worth it to me. So what I'll do is I'll test things out because most for me, most of the the orders I'm doing, I'm doing the day before. And the, and I'm 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 putting these orders in the day before. And when the market's trading, I don't know what's going on. I'm sleeping. So I don't know what's going on. And I've got to kind of kind of figure out ways that is going to work in my benefit without without putting me into undue risk. And to be quite honest with you, sometimes that's what happens. Is like I think something's gonna happen in the market. So I set up this order, and then the next morning, you know, it totally backfires. So I've learned over time paper trade. Anything that, that I'm not certain of, paper trade. So that's one thing that I'm doing throughout this bear market. I'm paper trading. I will always be paper trading the rest of my life. It's an easy way to test things out. Anyone that tells you paper trading is a joke and, or it's not good and, and something like this, say, oh, you know, because you don't get that real emotion in it and all this stuff. These people, um, these people, think about that. Think about uh, think about what they said because you, because you don't get the real emotion. Okay, that's true. You don't get the real emotion. Now let's take let's take their premise in in this one topic, right? And let's let's put that premise into other topics and see if that premise of not having the real emotion is valid, right? Now let's think about um let's think about you wanna you want to you want to have some competitive MMA fights, so. If you take that logic that they're, you're not getting the emotion, then you're not going to go to a gym. You're not going to hit a punching bag. You're not going to spar. You're not going to do any of that stuff. You're just going to go your very first day to learn. You're going to go right. You're going to go right in and sign up and just start fighting people. Now, very rarely is that going to work for people. Could be, could work for, for some, but very rarely is it going to work. No one is really going to, going to say like, oh, oh, you want to you want to fight MMA and you're gonna to go to a gym and practice. You're gonna punch a bag. That's ridiculous. There's no emotion in punching a bag. Now sometimes people say, hey, you know, there's no there's no one punching back at you. Yeah, but you still punch the bag to figure out how to do good punches so that way you can move forward. So that's really it. So don't don't listen to this this nonsense. Don't if you want to debate them, debate them. But me personally, I don't debate them. I just ha 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 yeah yeah yeah, and I just make a mental note. Like, yeah, yeah, that's not what you would do if you were going to fly, though, would you? If you had a chance to do to become a pilot, you'd probably take simulated flight course if you could, wouldn't you? Or every time, your very first time you ever got in an airplane, and you don't even know how to control the the the, the all the different whatever knobs and gadgets and all this stuff. And you're just like, no, I need the real emotion. To, in order to learn to fly, I just want to, you know, push me off the cliff, and I'm going to go for it. Come on. It's, it's sort of the same thing. Don't Don't listen to that nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, you're not going to get nonsense over here. This is IHaveSuccess.com. This is my baby. Go here. Get some free downloads. This one is good. Cash secured. Put option. Uh, uh, selecting stocks to sell cash secured. Put options on. They're all good. I like this one the most. 
three underused tactics to transform your financial success. Number three, if you can implement number three, I guarantee it will change your life. The only problem is, I don't know if you can implement it. You're going to have to try it out and let me know. You guys have a fantastic day. This Sunday, there's going to be a weekly market review. And your good buddy Brent is off for a Friday night. Bye-bye.